Oh, that that level we just got the coordinates for is my level. Is it? Yeah. We'll, we'll just have to plow through this level, and then. Yep. We'll... So. Uh, there's the there's the armor right there. Right, that's the armor vendor. Uh, let me go buy some ammo though. Too bad you're out of bolts because we just took them all away from you. Yep. Because we're a bunch of jerks. Yeah, that, another sort of decision that doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, the bouncer. Oh, and the mini rocket too. Are you serious? Both oh, great guns. Okay. Yep. So I have a, an interesting piece of trivia to share about this level. Okay. So in the world of Ratchet and Clank design, this level is the first time we did it right. Okay. When you're, when you're, a, when you're a Ratchet and Clank designer, this is the level that you study to learn how to do Ratchet and Clank combat segments. Who designed this level? I think this level was Brian Algar. Okay. Uh, although it might have been Colin, I, I forget. I think I think it was Brian Algar. Just not and you. That's what I want to make sure. It, it was certainly not me. And uh, uh, although I think I did parts of it uh, that were had nothing to do with the the combat and the stuff that makes it good, like the wonderful but, dynamo section we just did. Yes, exactly. I I remember that uh, when we were doing the design in Ratchet Three. This level was constantly brought up as the the standard to which all future levels would be measured. Okay. So, uh, and what it was was it's it, it marks the first time in the game that we use cover, really. Uh, that we have enemies that strafe uh, in and out of cover, and we do the sort of spawning multiple waves of enemies things that sort of become a staple of the franchise. Well, I wanted to talk really quickly about the uh, the strafing enemies because a lot of Go that credit goes to Tim, who programmed this level as well. Uh, at least the combat section, as far as I know. Um, that he took this approach with these enemies that is that approach is what allowed them to be what they were. And that these enemies are actually made up of two completely separate parts that behave completely independently from each other. Yeah. The uh, the torso and the legs are two different mobies, to use the uh, the technical terminology. Right. Because we had some animation blending in at this point, but it wasn't nearly sophisticated enough to do what we really wanted to do, which is have them run in one direction while looking in a completely different direction and firing it. And playing yeah. those two separate anims at any given time was a little bit too much to ask for from our animation blending system, where the only real creature that used that system was Ratchet at this point. Nothing else really did any animation blending. So Tim basically took on the task of building these guys out of two separate parts with their, with their own state machines. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the legs are an enemy and the torso is a separate enemy. Right, and then they just sort of talk to each other to make sure that they're sort of operating in sync, but their animations, they play completely independent, depending on whatever the situation is. And it was and a huge I, I remember pain there, in the ass. Yeah, tons of bugs resulted from that. Uh, but it was, it was a big challenge. It's the only way that we were able to really achieve the gameplay that we were looking for for this level. So big credit to, to him for taking on what turned out to be uh, a really big task. Yeah, but, sort of the the creation of, of the seminal Ratchet and Clank experience. Right, and, it, and after he had done this, we went on to use it in a few different parts of the game, and definitely in the next game, for sure. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, further on in the franchise. Because the big uh, animation blending stuff pretty much stayed just to be used on Ratchet. And in the future, when we did a lot of this sort of stuff, we used what, what Tim developed here for having the two separate uh, Mobis interacting with one another. Oh, God, I remember this part was hard. I like that tank. I'm a big fan of that tank. Did you code that tank? That was I think that tank was um, from level 5, wasn't it? Uh, there is a version of the tank that I made, but I don't think I made that. That specific instance of this. I might have done the effect, but I don't want to say that I did. But it's a possibility that I did the effect. Oh, did some some more uh, Greg moving parts. Oh! oh. oh. Shot right into the shark again. While I was trying to do nothing more than admire the scenery. That is that is cheap. Shame on you, Brian Algar. Shame on you. 
I'm just kidding. Just uh, that's not something that we do very often, Rash and Clank. And I thought that was something that we tried to uh, design out that you were never supposed to get shot from off camera like that. Yeah, if a if an enemy was off camera, it wasn't supposed to shoot you. Uh, I don't think it was systemic though. I think it was every enemy had to be coded that way from scratch. Right. Because though there were very few things in the Ratchet games, as we've mentioned before, that were systemic. Every enemy was coded specifically for the level it was in. Oh, so Tony, I'm going to concentrate on not dying like a retard. Uh, so if you no, can you think of anything to, You should just continue. You were doing pretty good until you got shot out of the blue in the face and into the shark vehicle. Oh, so that so it's that one's not on me. You're saying? No, I'm just saying. Yeah, that one. That's a failure of design. Is what that is. Another As interesting most thing things that, are. <laughs> uh, another interesting thing that we discovered because of these enemies and have used a lot in later games was, uh, as you mentioned, Tony, we're starting to put armor on the enemies here. Uh-huh. And uh, when you have enemies that take a lot of hits to kill, having armor on them gives you visual feedback without using a health bar of how well you're doing. Right. And uh, that tradition... Uh, sort of went on to future Ratchet games. Okay, so before I get sniped from off-screen again, uh, nice bit of moving stuff in the background, courtesy yeah. of Greg. It makes the world feel alive. And, That's right. Uh, oh, this is a place for me to use the sniper rifle. Where are you? One of the few circumstances where we spawn enemies... Uh, far away, you know, because usually we don't for frame rate reasons. So this gives me a chance to kind of snipe them in advance. Uh, I remember the scripting, uh, or at least the wiring that went into uh, setting up the waves of these guys was really complicated. Because, uh, as we've mentioned before, we don't have scripts. Right. And scripts are sort of a very useful tool for uh, you know, setting up waves of enemies like this. Uh, most of the time, in uh, previous to this, in a Ratchet and Clank segment, uh, the enemies would just be, you know, placed where they were going to show up eventually, or, you know, run in on splines or something like that, right? Right. There, there would only be one wave of enemies. We wouldn't have multiples. And this, the success of the gameplay in this level, led to there being a lot more waves and us needing to have more complex systems for setting up things like waves. Right. Uh, the way that it worked in uh, the way that it worked in this level was every enemy had a link to all of the enemies that would spawn when he died, right? So he would so enemy one would have enemy two, three, and four that backed him up, and enemy one would link to enemy two, then enemy two would link to enemy three, and enemy three to four, and then uh, when one died, he would spawn the other one. Is basically how it worked, and the number of bugs. <laughs> that that cost was oh so astronomical. I had to set up these enemies in in other levels, and I just remember it being such a gigantic pain in the ass. Fortunately, now though, you know, uh, scripting, they have scripting, so it's easier to set up these kind of interesting Ratchet and Clank signature setups. Um, oh, this was an experimental area too, um, where we had enemies above you and below you. Oh, okay. Um, and I don't, I think. Ultimately, we weren't happy with it because we don't do this a lot. But we were t trying a lot of new things in this game, uh, you know, to just to see what the ratchet style of combat actually was. And uh, this was one of them. You know, let's let's try multi-level gameplay. But as it turns out, you know, there's no real reason to go down here. So why uh, why even have the multiple levels? Right, especially when you can just put a shark gear down there, and then everybody yep. will hate you. <laughs> Fall to death is the best. What are you talking about? Uh, almost as good as Fall to Death in the training area, which is another amazing uh, piece of design. All right. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, you can snipe these guys pretty well. Let's see how I do. How far do we let you zoom in with that sniper rifle? Um, that far? Okay, because I remember that was a uh, a problem in and of itself. Uh, the zooming in, 
Oh, how so? Well, we have LOD on enemies, obviously. I mean, why you have to have LOD. And what is an LOD? Uh, LOD is uh, short for level of detail. And it basically means that as if the if an object is far away, you reduce its level of detail so you're not drawing as much. And as you get closer and closer, you increase the level of detail. So each level of detail has fewer polygons. Right. It basically just, yeah, it looks worse, basically, because you don't see as much from far away, so you don't have to draw as much to really to make it look very good. But exactly. when you have the sniper rifle, you're technically very far away, but you can look as if you were very close. So you right, because I think it imp- increases the field of view, doesn't actually zoom in the camera. Right. So... Basically, you would end up getting a close-up view of the enemies in low level of detail and have them look not really great as a result. So I don't remember exactly how we solved the problem, but I remember it was a, a, a definite problem that you would be able to zoom in and basically see the enemies looking pretty, pretty bad. Exactly. I agree with you. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you agree. I, I don't remember it being a problem, but I'm going to go ahead and say that you're not imagining it. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's the best I can do. It's 4th of July, dude. No, not 4th of July. No, it's not. Oh, right, it's not. previous recording. Yes, that is not today uh, at all. All right. Well, actually, it's technically not in two hours at all. All right. Are Where you are you going? lost, Mike? I am lost. I think oh, you're supposed to go okay. up that ladder. What ladder? To your right. Your other right. No, that ladder takes you up to a, a sniper tower. Uh, oh, and then swing shot across? I think so. I think there's something up there. Yeah, you're right. It's over here. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And I haven't played this game in like seven years, and I remember that. Come on, Mike. You are a god among men, Tony. Man, that's a lot of gravy bolts. Well, For- we forty bolts per per gravy collectible. I mean, things are starting to get really expensive, and there's a lot that's of money true. sinks that are coming up now. Oh God! And these are all fall to death too. I uh, I know for a fact uh, I did code those Dynamo platforms. Really? Yeah, and uh, I stole the art from for them from some other thing, which is why they look so bad. <laughs> uh, like I stole the art, scaled it up, and uh, you know, just like uh, just code because I needed something, uh, you know, to to put in one of my levels, and uh, that's that ended up being it. And they never replaced it. Nope. See, that's that's, that's the, the way problem. It is. There's a there's a uh, there's a trick to making programmer art. What to put the no chicken symbol uh, on it or the rainbow? It just has to look horrible. It has to look so horrible that the artist will be embarrassed to see that in their level, and then they will replace it. That is the trick. 